Recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Listen up all you technical analysis and chartists because I'm about to rock your world with today's video. Wrote an article on this uh, back in January. I think I posted it on StockTwits. Got some reaction. I'd like to get a little more reaction. Here's what we talked about. Trend lines are mathematically absurd. And my goal was to kill the sacred cow of technical analysis by addressing what's wrong with trend lines, why you shouldn't be using them, why essentially they are mathematically absurd. I'm gonna give you my top three reasons. Let's do uh, back up here and do some groundwork. What is a trend line? This is from, uh, this is the Dow between 03 and 08. Uh, got this from a guy who really believes in trend lines. Notice he connected a, a low here from 2003 and he is able to draw a line because he connects to this point here and that extends into the future and he found this significant in fact uh, the guy who made this chart is a big Edwards and McGee follower we'll talk about them in a second who said that the break of this trend line here was his signal to get out of the market uh, and avoid what eventually became a much bigger slide with the Dow going down to 6,500 uh, by 2009. So, are trend lines useful? We'll examine that. We'll also examine if they are mathematically sound. All right, advancing my slide here. Okay, so Edwards and McGee, they wrote the Bible of technical analysis. This book was originally published in 1948. This uh, copy here has a big red seven on it. It was the seventh edition. I believe they're in the, at least the 10th edition right now. Uh, technical analysis, TA for short. There are multiple ways to view charts and volume and momentum, and there are, many of them are extremely useful. I wanna make sure that you understand that. I like a lot of things about technical analysis because it gives you a picture of price behavior that can tell you what big money is likely doing. Uh, so you also grasp the psychology, the emotions, the commitments, and maybe even the subjective beliefs of players. You know, it, everything gets discounted in price. You can also uh, reveal patterns, identify patterns, and then you can take historical data and test it to figure out statistical tendencies. So tons of great stuff to do with charts and the data that you get from price. Uh, you know, whether it's pa mining patterns or uh, using some fancy oscillators or some such. Speaking of which, I just pulled up a chart today. This is June 29th. Uh, this is the SPY. Look at this heavy volume over here after Brexit. And uh, I just threw some things on here. I've got uh, 50 and 200 day moving averages. Actually, that's the default on stockcharts.com. Uh, also the MACD and down below. Uh, relative strength up above, and I threw on some Bollinger Bands. All this stuff is extremely useful. Moving averages are uh, you know, giving you a fluid picture of what price is doing. That, so they can, uh, I use moving averages to tell me about trend and not trend lines. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, but oscillators like MACD, stochastics, relative strength, all great stuff. Uh, you know, and you can use it in conjunction you know, with many other tools to uh, possibly predict the next price move over the next hour or the next week or the next month. But continuing on our journey of why trend lines are mathematically absurd, uh, I mentioned that article I wrote in January. It was just a short thing I posted on StockTwits and Twitter. I mentioned my top three reasons that trend lines are mathematically absurd. So we'll start with number three, not the biggest, but one that makes sense. Logical fallacies abound. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go back to this chart right here. So notice somebody connected a, a price point there and a price point here. What many chartists do, no matter whether they're looking at a long time frame or a one minute chart, is they will connect some points of price and then talk about well, you can see here where the price touched the trend line. Well, actually, no, it didn't touch the trend line there because the trend line did not exist until this second point. You have to have at least two points to make a trend line, right? So the trend line didn't exist until once we get past here. Now the trend line exists and nothing has touched this trend line until here. Okay, 
So that's a logical fallacy. It's, a, it's called a tautology. When you use an initial condition to define something that couldn't exist without that initial condition. Circular logic. Chartists do it all the time. All right. But I forgive them. All right. Let's see. So what's my second top reason that trend lines are mathematically absurd? They're so subjective. Uh, first of all, that chart I showed you, where exactly did he pick the point on that first price low? Did he use a close? Did he use a low? Was it a monthly, weekly, whatever? Uh, traders get to decide all that, right? So a little bit of a difference there can lead to big differences, especially the longer out your line goes. So that's something to think about subjectively, who's making the decision, what point did I use on, on a price bar? And then the differences get amplified even more depending on the charting platform you're using, uh, the, you know, its scale, what index you're using, like the, the spiders, you know, is the dividend in there or not? So all kinds of little differences can get amplified um, and, sh you know, make trend lines different. There's no, it, it's, this is another reason it's not precise, so it can't be mathematical because the one subjective initial condition could change a lot. Right, but that's still not the biggest reason that trend lines are mathematically absurd. The biggest reason is that markets are not linear. They're the most complex, multi-dimensional multi systems on the planet. Why? Because markets have human social behavior with nearly infinite variables in them. So that makes them an extremely complex system. And if you think about weather modeling, hey, we can model the weather. You know, People criticize the weather person. Hey, how can somebody keep a job and be wrong all the time? But really, most weather people across the country are doing the same job with similar models and actually doing it pretty well. It, when we can forecast out three or four or five days based on a weather model, it's, it's amazing stuff, really. And it's based in science, and then it's run through a statistical model. Now, the model might be wrong sometimes, but you know, crunching that scientific data, we keep getting better at, it, better at it. And that's why sometimes forecasts going out five, six days are amazingly accurate. All right, we'll come back to weather. So where do you use straight lines in statistics? A linear regression. Here's just a simple linear regression. Uh, you know, a least squares line running through a series of data points. Well, why is it okay to use straight lines in statistics but not on a price chart? measuring completely different things. A linear regression is mathematically based, mathematically derived. A line connecting price extremes on a chart is not mathematically der derived. It's derived by somebody with a ruler. Well, back when uh, Edwards and McGee wrote their book, they were using rulers. Now, it's so easy for anybody to point and click and say, oh, I'm making this trend line. It must be significant. Okay, let's we, we go further into the jungle here. So what does it matter? What, you know, what is Cook's point that markets are not linear? So what? Well, here are my points. Why would a complex system like a stock market obey an arbitrary straight line through time? That's a question you have to ask yourself if you use trend lines. So, and I'm suggesting that ru ruler methods are obsolete in a modern age of st statistical analysis and the sciences of complexity. I'm trying to get through this fast because I got so many slides here. So, it, uh, again, this Bible, the Edwards and McGee Bible, that has everybody, uh, you know, paying homage to the naked emperor and using a ruler to draw straight lines on charts, it's way obsolete, and nobody is talking about this. We've got a, uh, you know, societies of technical analysis and stuff like this that that are still using straight lines connecting price extremes on charts when they have no mathematical foundation. Um, and, and in a modern age, you know, where we're studying sciences of complexity now that have advanced tremendously. So obviously weather modeling is a huge one. All right, let's keep going here. So uh, linear regressions and least squares are sound mathematical means of defining trend. Going to my next slide here. They look just like trend lines on a chart, right? A linear regression. 
Um, and you could even, I think I got a channel one here. Let's see, yeah. Hey, here's a, here's a RAF regression channel. I actually like this because it's, it's number one, it's based on a linear regression. And then they just put a channel around it which is equidistant from the linear regression. So there's no subjectivity here. It's mathematically based because you're using a linear regression of price. So these are not traditional trend lines. This is a channel created off of a linear regression. It's, it could be very useful um, and it's not subjective and it is mathematically based. All right, now here's, here's a quote from a, a stats book. Trend estimation is a statistical technique to aid interpretation of data. Okay, that makes sense. But it does not relate to the statistical significance of the trend line itself. In other words, the, uh, a linear regression line is not the data. It's just a way of interpreting the data. Key, key thing to remember here. All right. So let's get into channels, patterns, and random luck. How often do we need or use linear regressions in weather modeling? Well, we don't really need them. You know, they're, they're in there somewhere, and you could use them if you're studying uh, weather stats. But would a straight line help you predict the behavior of a wave on a beach? Of course not. And trend lines may work because, I mean, you know, uh, in terms of probability, they might just work sometimes, right? And there is a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy too with a lot of technical analysis. So break a trend line, uh, does it go back through, does it not, you know, you know flip a coin, 60-40, maybe it works. But there are so many better methods of analyzing price and not one that is really like hocus pocus, drawing a line through time. And I'll give, you, I'll give you an example in a minute and you'll see that drawing a line through time connecting price extremes is hocus pocus. All right, uh, and, and so my, what I'm leading up to here is that markets are much more complicated than even weather or waves. And you wouldn't draw straight lines through weather or waves. All right, so here is the S&P uh, from the 2009 low to today as a matter of fact. S&P bouncing back up to 2060. So here's what I'm asking. Now, if, I, if you can just follow me here since I don't have a pointer. Okay. This trend line was created by, we start at 2009, here's 2011, now the trend line exists. Here it comes. We haven't touched the trend line yet. Okay, that's interesting. But what's gone on between 2011 and now? Well, five years of economic data, economic trade, exchange, price movement, billions and billions and billions of economic events have transpired in the last five years between 2011, that point, and here. So would any reasonable person expect this line to dictate anything about what this behavior should or shouldn't do. Should, should all this economic activity now all of a sudden pay attention to this line? Well, the chartists and trend line drawers would say yes, but markets are so much more complex than that to have a straight line from two points in the past define what they may or may not do now. And that, and that this would be the beginning of, uh, you know, a recession if we go through that line. So that's something to think about there. All right, so one of the major insights that I want to leave you with here is that it is, comes from Taleb. And you know, if you haven't read this book, and if you don't, if you hated statistics or you don't have any formal stats training, start with this book. It's a great introduction to standard deviation and statistics, what it was designed for, how it was invented, and why it doesn't work for markets. So and, uh, Taleb calls the, the bell curve uh, that great intellectual fraud. So you know what I'm leading up to here, what I want to sink in, in these points, and I want you to watch this video again and, and look at these slides, you can hardly define anything about markets with straight lines. And that's because I call markets social beasts. You know, it's, it's human behavior multiplied exponentially with 
you know, extreme swings, infinite complexity, and what Taleb calls wild randomness. Anything can happen, right? Um, after I read Taleb, I said, you know, when there is no standard for deviation, anything can happen. And that's how markets work. So, you know, and you, so you want to associate words like nonlinear, thermodynamic, geometric, exponential with markets and their potential. And so straight lines might be okay for phenomena that follows a normal distribution. And that's where you go back to Taleb and understand what the normal distribution is meant to measure, you know, and, and where it fails in markets. The, this is how uh, the VIX is constructed. The VIX is constructed based on the implied volatility of options prices, but it's built on, you know, hey, this is what happened, this is what, and so this is what could happen. This is the estimated range for a market. Uh, but it doesn't take into account the, the volatility that we had last week on Brexit. Uh, you, you know, you, you hear headlines like, oh, that was a, you know, uh, a 15 standard deviation move that should only happen once every trillion years. Well, that's because the normal distribution doesn't really apply to something as uh, dynamic and nonlinear as a market, okay? So that's why you want to go back to Taleb and get your black swan going. Now, leave some comments here. Tell me why you think that trend lines are, are mathematically sound and meaningful to, uh, to measuring, I mean, that they're math-based. I mean, that, that's really the question here, is, it, is if they're not, and I'm going beyond that they're not mathematically derived, I'm saying they're mathematically absurd. Again, think about the straight line going through time, connecting points over several years. Should that line have anything to do with the future behavior of a market? Well, and you can break it down, you know, in, in your shorter time frames too. But the point is, is that um, and the reason I use the word absurd is because a trend line has nothing to do with uh, measuring the mathematical nature of price over time. It's just a drawing. All right, thanks for joining me in the kitchen. Leave your comments.